Good afternoon. And that was wonderfully loud. And welcome. <laughs> what? I wanted to make sure I projected. There we go. Because yeah. the fact is, I was a Toastmaster, and you learn how to project across mm -hmm. the audience uh, to your security and compliance in 2020 and beyond. Um, I'm going to start things off a little bit differently than you're used to before. I want you all to take out your cell phones. Oh, wait. Take out your cell phones right now. Open it up to the app. Open up to the page where there's questions. I want you to go in there and answer questions. Put questions in there as you go along. I don't know about you, but I have these nuggets of wisdom and things I want to say as things go on, and I forget it later. But also, it gives me the excuse that while I'm watching you inside there, I think that you're paying attention and just writing tons of questions. Hi, I'm Mark Sawich. Um, I've been at Guidewire for a dozen and a half years. I've had many different uh, positions from delivery services to field enablement, and now I'm a proud member of the Guidewire security team. Um, stay tuned, where later in this session, I'm going to be talking about shared responsibility, synchronized skiing, and I'll provide a list of items that'll help you on your security journey. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Neil Khan Patel. You can call me Neil. I work here as a senior director, uh, sorry, director for security assurance. I'm responsible for product security at Guidewire. Been here with Guidewire about four years now. Hey, James. And I'm James Dolph. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer. I have been here the least time. I just crossed two years uh, as the CISO at Guidewire, and we've had a whole lot of fun over those last two years. And today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the strategy about how we approach security at Guidewire, knowing the importance of it for all of you. We're going to talk about how we build secure products, and then we're going to talk about the last mile and synchronized skiing, right? That the, and I do think we need yeah. to get the clicker. We, I forgot to well, get there the is, clicker. There is a really important part um, that you all need to, has everybody memorized this yet? <laughs> Who's going to come up and recite it for me? This just basically means if we talk about anything that is forward-looking in the future that you, know, you make your investment decisions based on what you know now and not what we talk about for the future. But the first thing I want to talk about is, is trust. And so trust is one of these words that is thrown around a lot and can mean a whole lot of things to different people. But in Guidewire, we think of trust in this really broad way. And one of the major pillars of that is how we think about security. And so who in this room thinks that trust and security is a major issue for their organization? Of all the people that have your hands up, keep it up if it's a board level issue where your board of directors is interested in it. It's like almost everybody's hands up. For the rest of you, your homework is to get your boards involved and to, to make it a company issue because security is one of these defining issues of the time. I think if you look at the macro environment, what's going on in the world, um, all the ransomware attacks and the evolution of the way that these actors are, are engaging in the technology community and, and who they're targeting and how they're targeting them. We all have this in, incredibly huge asymmetric challenge that we're dealing with when it comes to security. And so we all need to really think about, you know, all the different players in our technology ecosystem, our environments, our people, and it sounds like a really big job, but one very important part that's not lost on Guidewire is that you all need us to do everything we can to make sure that our products are secure, and that leads to your success. And it allows you to go to your boards of directors and other stakeholders and customers and have trust, just like the trust that you've given us if you've been a customer for a long time, or the trust that you give us when you open up a new line of products. Um, so we I talked a lot about how your success is, is related to uh, you know, what we provide to you. Um, Guidewire has made a lot of investments, particularly over the last three years as we've been on our cloud journey, to make sure that what we are building meets the needs of our customers. Because, you know, today, what we need to build uh, in terms of a security posture is not going to be good enough for tomorrow. It's not going to be good enough in the future. We see this like constantly escalating environment. And so we need to think about what's the next inflection point and what are the challenges of our customers. And we rely on a lot of feedback from all of you. So one thing before I get started in talking about our strategy is we really value the feedback that you provide us about security. I think a lot of people are afraid to talk about security. 
tell us what you see, tell us what's important to you, uh, because that gives us data that we can use to make sure that we're meeting your needs. All right, so we talked about this last year. This is our uh, security strategy. And so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I wanted to remind everybody if this is the first time you've seen a talk at uh, Connections about security, how we think about security, because we could prioritize a million different things in security. We could spend the, the entire company's budget on security, but we have to come up with ways to prioritize it in the ways that are most effective uh, to provide value to our customers. So we break this up into three parts. The first one, continuously strengthening the baseline. This is all the table stakes stuff that you expect, like patching and multi-factor authentication and all the stuff that we do to secure the products from a table stakes perspective. We have to do those well. Otherwise, the advanced capabilities that we continue to deliver don't have a basis. It's like that building in San Francisco, the Millennium Tower, where they didn't go down to bedrock and the thing is leaning into another tower. So we need to make sure that we, we focus on the foundation and do that right. Delivering securely and quickly. You'll be embarrassed if you raise your hand for this question, but who would like us to go faster and not care about security? I don't have any trolls in this audience, so I like you guys, that's good. A part of us delivering to you and part of the cloud model is that you expect excellent security and you expect agility and speed. And from our standpoint, we have to make sure that the development teams at Guidewire are able to deliver in a way that meets the needs of our customers, the very high bar that our customers have, in a quick way so that you can get value out of Guidewire products. So it's not a, we are moving slow because of security situation. We want to make sure that you can have both. And so we focus a lot of our efforts, and Neil will talk about some of the things that we do to secure our products. The last part is compliance and third parties. So it's all good and well for you know, Mark and Neil and I to get up here and say, you have, we have one of these and one of these and all these different processes and all this great stuff, but it's another thing for us to get third-party verification. So we have industry standard certifications, we have third parties that evaluate our products from an independent standpoint, which both give us feedback on how we're doing on our internal process, but gives you an independent view on how we're doing. So you can say, hey, Guideware, we'd like to see your SOC 2 report because it helps us with our compliance and it helps us to build trust and it keeps us honest with you. But there's some new things that we've been working on. And uh, I'll get into the exact, you know, what we've actually done. But I'm going to talk about some of the challenges and what they mean in the new world. So when we think about SaaS and the future of SaaS and we think about critical infrastructure companies, which insurance companies are critical infrastructure companies. They rely on SaaS, and there are new challenges that come with this. So did you all know that the criminal ecosystem has become a real ecosystem? There are groups that their whole goal is to just find, find people in a company to compromise, and then they build this like portfolio of them, and they sell them to ransomware actors. And there are groups that sell ransomware as a service platforms. They are, they're essentially you know, selling on a subscription model uh, platforms that allow them to encrypt all of our environments if they get a foothold. And then there are money mules and all the different things that sounds an awful lot like our technology footprint that we might have in our, uh, our companies as well, too. You know, we use a lot of different stuff. So the, what it means is that our, our adversaries are getting this network effect. And the criminal groups are sharing information. You know, we, we sometimes are a little cautious with our information about especially what's going on in security. But what we know is that the things that the attackers are sharing help them to be successful more broadly because if it works with you, it's going to work with your neighbor and it's going to work with someone else. And um, so they're finding you know, what are the best of the best uh, patterns. And so they're sharing information while we are not sharing information for, to the greatest extent. We're also working in isolation for security because we're all very uncomfortable about talking about our security posture. And, and I think over the years, you're gonna see a lot more sharing, you're gonna see a lot more um, openness about what everybody's doing. But we know that the attackers, you know, they know that we're working in isolation, so they get to reuse a lot of their research. So they have this, this, this talks a lot about the, the asymmetric challenge that we're dealing with. And so, you know, I talked about how critical infrastructure uh, companies like insurers have this big challenge. And so one of the things that Guidewire did this year in April, did anybody see our press release for this? 
nobody saw it, so I get, to, I get to open this up to you guys. So in April, we founded, along with a, a few other like-minded SaaS companies, a group called the IT ISAC Critical SaaS Special Interest Group. And this group is focused on sharing information. All those challenges that I talked about in the previous slide, these challenges here, we're thinking, how do we solve these problems? And so some like-minded companies got together and said, we are the critical infrastructure of these critical infrastructure organizations. And so we need to come up with a new way to share intelligence and work towards a collective defense model. So if one of you are under attack, we may have more information about that so that we can respond in a more resilient way or protect you or prevent more things from happening uh, over time. It's based on the FSARC. Is any, are any of you members of FSARC? It's like the sort of top tier of the FSI SAC, which is a, it's an information sharing group. Um, it's based on the FSARC model, so it's a subset of the ITI SAC. We're very much focused, again, on that collective defense, but we have a lot of other ideas of things that we can share to really do this in service of all of you. So we know that there's things in product security that we might want to share, or there's things in regulations that might help our customers. So there, we have a whole bunch of stuff on the backlog, but we think that this is going to be one of the critical components to us being resilient in the future towards the new challenges that we're all going to be facing. And we think that this brings additional value to guide our customers, being that we're one of the founders and the, the early adopters of this approach. So talk a little bit about our strategy and the things that uh, that we're trying to do in the future to make us stronger. I'm gonna pass off to Neil, who's gonna talk about the rigor that we put into building products and some of the capabilities that we have put in place to make sure that you all have secure implementations. Thank you, James. <clears throat> Hello again, everyone. Connecting to collective defense, isn't that an exciting and innovative concept and in that what do you expect from us at Guidewire? To be able to come together with our collective expertise and collaborate and build greater defense against ever-evolving threat defense, threat landscape and actors. Imagine all that we can do to achieve shared security success. Isn't that a lovely view? How many of you ski here? Wonderful. How about you, Neil? Do you ski? I'm not a skier. We're going to change that this year. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, uh, so those of, those of you who have been engaged in high altitude, high speed, high risk skiing, understand negotiating a mountain is no easy feat. You engage yourself through a series of turns and recoveries, and it is in these recoveries that you spring up to prepare for the next turn. Your body instinctively wants to lean back, lean back and slow down while you must trust your skis and move forward into the gathering speed. It is therefore in our ability to, to anticipate prepare and engage risk is that we measure our success. To be able to build and meet trust, companies must tackle multiple components like security, compliance, privacy, and transparency. However, the one component that sits right at the center of it is a secure product, a product that is supported by a continuous process to build security by design, gives you the right foundation for trust, threat resiliency, and defense in depth. Interested with your data in Guidewire Cloud, we owe you nothing less than the best protections that we can possibly provide. <clears throat> Today, I'm excited to walk you through over how we instill trust into our products, platform, and services by design. When we talk about design, what exactly is design or trust by design? If you're familiar with this famous quote, design is not what it looks like and just feels like it is how it works from Steve Jobs. Similarly, likewise, <clears throat> trust by design is how you carefully and continuously wove security into every aspect of your product through its development life cycle and phases. At Guidewire, we have a, we have a robust secure development life cycle process which is curated based of industry standard frameworks such as NIST, SSTF, PCM, OWASP best practices, and other best practices. At the core of the framework, it's supported by three guiding principles which is scalable, integrated, and risk-based. Talking about cloud, everything that we do has to do with scale. If it's not scalable, it will not, it will not help you meet desired outcomes in terms of security, all in terms of process automation, people, and technology. We ensure our process and framework is integrated across all the functions of product development within Guidewire. For this purpose, we leverage 
security champions framework wherein we have groups of security champions and security architects who are integrated with various product lines and various functionalities who work very closely with those products and ensure that security is, is part of that product. Lastly, risk-based prioritization. <clears throat> it, is very, it is very easy for an organization to overwhelm themselves in terms of vulnerabilities if you are not able to rightly prioritize and manage those vulnerabilities coming, coming out of your framework or scanning or testing. Right? A lot of these vulnerabilities are not effective based on, based on how you develop your product or can be effective on based on how you use it, how, how you use the library or code in, in your application. So if you do not have the right amount of prioritization as part of your as your framework, you will easily overwhelm your resources and not meet your security outcomes. Having said that, with the three principles, we have two, two values to support it. You know, it has to be agile. <clears throat> it supports our varying release cadences. How many of you know, like along with key releases, we have applications and services that, that release in an agile manner? We would have applications that release every bi-weekly or every continuously. We have applications that do continuous deployments. So it's very important for us when we design this process, the, the process to be agile and, and catered across multiple release cadences. <clears throat> At the same time, it is designed to be based on continuous improvement model for us to be able to continuously learn and adapt of how we are performing. Lastly, talking through the phases of, phases of development life cycle and how we integrate security into each phase. Requirements, <clears throat> as we all know, requirements to your design and design to your development, if you're not able to incorporate right, right requirements at the first stage of the development, you might not have correct security features within your application. So it's very important for us to, as part of this process, insert baseline security requirements as part of the development process. You know, this can cover, this can cover your baseline application security requirements, this can cover your Regulatory, regulatory requirements, this can cover your compliance requirements. And lastly, training around how we, how we do secure coding design. It is a well-known fact of the cost of fixing a bug in production increases 10 to 100 times than identifying early and fixing earlier. It is therefore extremely critical to review the design from security perspective and identify identify security flaws and, and fix them at the right time. As part, of this, as part of this phase, we engage with the product development team, understand the design architecture and data flows, and carefully craft required security features requirements as part of that, as part of the design. As part of this process, we also engage with the team to perform threat modeling, is, is basically analyzing the architecture of the application, understanding the inputs and the outputs, understanding the threat, threat boundaries and the threat actors, and then coming up with security requirements that will help make the design more resilient from threats. <clears throat> Lastly, during development, this is where the coding happens. We have, integrated, we have integrated technologies into our pipeline, which will perform automated static application security testing and open source security testing, which is very important to identify security bugs as we code them and identify security bugs in the open source libraries as we, as we include them into our products. This is also supported by our development training program where we, where we provide security standards and guidelines for, for our developers to, to securely code. <clears throat> testing, this is where we perform dynamic application security testing of the application as you compile your application and build end to end and deploy your application it is, it is important for you to be able to advance your testing and then do the end-to-end -end testing, security testing of your application for what, what was not visible to be discovered in previous phase. As part of this process, we also scan our environments for continuous vulnerability scanning and scanning to identify as many as bugs as we can and then and drive them towards remediation. To be able to be successful in prioritization remediation at Guidewire, we have implemented centralized vulnerability management framework where we, <clears throat> where we guide all the vulnerabilities into one framework and, and provide one view across all vulnerabilities to the teams. It is extremely important for them to have this, to be able to, to, be able to analyze those vulnerabilities quickly and triage them and prioritize them and remediate them as necessary. Lastly, release. 
this is where, with all the work that we have done internally about security testing and scanning, is we engage third-party third party security testing providers where we carefully, carefully select and engage reputed third-party penetration testing providers to perform penetration testing of our products before releases. This is also the phase where we work with the engineering teams to assess that we have met all the security definition of doneness. This is extremely important uh, for us to be able to, to assess the doneness of the application before it goes into release or, or goes into production. And lastly, this is driven by, this is this follows with a go no go decision based on based on what we have identified in the application and how we have secured and remediated this is followed by a go no go decision of the final release. Maintenance. In terms of what you do, in terms of vulnerability management, vulnerability management is ever evolving. You will have libraries decaying over the time. You will have code decaying over the time. You will have new threats and risks which are being discovered and attack vectors which are being discovered. It is extremely important for you to be able to have a robust vulnerability response process, to be able to quickly act upon those vulnerabilities, monitor those, and, and react on those and respond on those in terms of to ensure your product is secure in, in deployment and maintenance. And lastly, that's, that's also part of our continuous improvement process. We, we establish a continuously monitoring framework where we monitor our products for, for threats and risk and, and remediate all the identified vulnerabilities and provide response. As you know, we perform continuous security scanning of our guide wire cloud infrastructure applications and platform. These tests are in, intended to to improve and validate GuideWire security posture and are part of our commitment for security of the cloud. However, we have been listening to you in terms of limitations of some of the known limitations of these tests that we perform. For example, different customers have different security goals. You are unique. What works for you may not work for others. These tests that we perform do not provide the right value and coverage to you in terms of the customizations and integrations that you introduce into, into your implementations through your, through your continuous development process on GuideWire Cloud. Lastly, uh, as James mentioned, what we do today may not be relevant tomorrow. As your implementation goes through critical lifecycle events like go live, upgrades, major changes. So it, therefore, it is important for you to be able to trust and verify and instill the same amount of trust in your customers. Today, I'm glad to be able to announce to you uh, a new process of customer security testing that we are all excited and gearing up to launch by fiscal year, current fiscal year quarter three of GuideWire, which will enable customers to perform their own security testing and, and meet the principle of trust but verify. We truly believe this process will empower and enable our customers to meet their own unique security goals, obtain 360 degree verification of their implementation, and lastly, to do security your way, you'll be able to, you'll be able to, you'll be able to perform your own security testing and verify your implementation as required. <clears throat> to fulfill your, to fulfill your shared responsibility of security in the cloud. Talking about shared responsibility, I'll now hand over to Mark to talk more about shared responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neil, for talking us through what it takes to build a secure product. Um, now's where I'm going to take our journey a little bit further, deeper, into the area of the code where you, our customers, our implementation partners, and our solution partners have control of the code as designed. We call this part of our journey the last mile. How many people out there have heard the term that the most accidents occur closest to home? How many people haven't? And how many people are not listening? That's probably me. All right. So some of our clients out there tried to test the validity of this particular statement. And the uh, results were, I wanted to say, phenomenal. As it turns out, 5% of all accidents occur, sorry, I did it again. 55% of all accidents occur within five minutes of your home. And 77% of all accidents occur within 12 miles of your home. What they found is that it's the familiarity that gets people um, a little distracted. Now let's continue with this theme of skiing. Uh, 
James, what is it called when you are going down a hill and you wipe out? It's called a yard sale. A yard Has sale. Has anybody heard that before? Yeah, I've so, been in a lot of yard sales. So let's refer to this. We don't want to have any yard sales on our cloud. We can do everything in our power to build a secure product and host it on a secure platform. It's this last mile that is the most critical to your secure outcomes. This is where you, as a client, uh, put in your secret sauce that sets you as an individual in this market. That's where, as a client, you may use the advanced product developer, or you may use some of the uh, solutions that are on our site by our, uh, our solution partners. Uh, or you have your homegrown collection of integrations that set you apart in this particular industry. Um, also, as a solution partner, these are the places that you will create your own solution and host it up in our Guidewire marketplace to help everyone be successful. Um, we want to help you be successful on the cloud. You are unique. You are smart. You already have your own collection of security implementation processes. You have your own legal teams. You have your secure processes. You have your own auditing and compliances. Uh, we build a platform to make all of your uniqueness be successful on the cloud. And this uniqueness has made us think a little bit about how we can take your secure processes and our secure processes and combine them to create a unified process, or as James said once to me, we combine and become Voltron. That is funny. I did say that. Yes. It was a true statement. <laughs> you need to know what we need. Everyone needs to know what they're doing. We need to know what you're doing. You need to know what we're doing on the cloud so that we can ensure that all aspects of our defense and depth posture are accounted for. Our shared responsibility on Guidewire Cloud is what keeps us aligned and successful. How many of you have seen synchronized skiing before? These skillful skiers need to ter uh, traverse their way down some treacherous, I'm trying to alliterate here and it didn't really work as well as I had hoped, terrifyingly treacherous terrain. All of them have to look at their members as they're going down this slope, as the terrain is changing from side to side and gravity is yanking them down. Does that sound familiar? I think this depicts the way that we share our responsibles very well on Guidewire Cloud Platform. Sharing responsibilities provides a lot of optimizations for all of us. You don't have to care how we implement our cloud implementation. You don't care how we scale up and scale down. You don't care where you put in a WAF, a web application firewall. You concentrate on your unique item that you'd like to put on the cloud. We realize that there's work that ne needs to happen in order for this to happen, and we're here to guide you to tell you what happens beforehand and what you'll have to do continuously as time goes on. Here are some of the resources that we've created to help you on your guidewire journey. We have documents on PII, that's personally identifiable information, PCI, that's uh, payment card handling, uh, GDPR, I'm sure you've heard a lot of that before. And uh, how many of you know that with each of our releases, we actually provide a checksum on docs.guidewire.com so that if you are working independently, you can pull that information down and verify the checksum just to make sure that someone didn't interject in the way and give you the wrong version. And also, how many of you know that we actually have a collection of additional inspections that can be put, it into, gu put into Guidewire Studio that contain some security-related inspections. You should check this one out. You go to the Guidewire Marketplace, look up the SurePath Accelerator, or the SurePath, mm -hmm. um, SurePath plugin, and it's in there, and it can be put into your environment. Now, as it turns out, our assurances team use this collection of, a part of these collection of inspections for their automated assurance check on the, uh, what do they call it now? The snow plow. Um, sorry, Snow Patrol project, and it's going to be happening in this room right after this talk. Uh, the date and time is wrong. It's not hybrid five, it did change. 
We are in an exciting, fast-moving, incredibly innovative period in our industry. We know that you are some of the most security-conscious companies in the entire world. You know what you need to do to succeed in the market. And this is what you need to do to take ownership of your security on the GuideWare Cloud. One, focus on the materials that we're providing to you to help you along your journey. Number two, concentrate on your, on your specific uniqueness to make sure that your product works together. And three, I want you to concentrate on security as you're developing. Um, and finally, we do welcome feedback and questions. Please ensure that, again, in the app, you put in questions and reach out to your account team to add questions. Security is an ongoing and never-ending, exciting and value-adding opportunity. There is no finish line, and that's okay. We're on this journey together, and we're proud to be on those ski slopes with you. And I think that is it for the presentation. All right, thank you, Mark. So we're gonna answer some questions from the application, but if you wanna ask a question live, I'd like to do those first, if you wanna come up to the mic, um, if you're not shy, but you know, people who are interested in security might have a little bit of shyness, but don't worry, like we're far enough away, we're not too scary. Um, so if anybody has anything they wanna ask live, pop up, but I'm gonna answer one from here. This one's a real easy one. Where can we get the links from the resources, Mark? Ah, uh, that is that in the deck. You know what? That I should have put it in the deck. Now I tried to do that. So you'll notice that I did list kind of the categories of all the different things that we have available, which is a wonderful way to sidestep finding that. And as a client, that's exactly what you want to do. Um, the list became very, very large, and it looks terrible on a slide. So I'm working with uh, Jonathan from the developer team. And within the next month, we're getting a blog that's gonna be put on guideware.com, which will point, to, point you to where all the resources currently are inside of Guideware that you have access to. Often you'll have to authenticate to get in, but it should help. I'm gonna put this one here. I think this is a really good question, and, and I, hope that, uh, I hope that this helps when we answer this. The question is, I understand that GDPR and CCPA have information security components. What do these and the many impending similar regulations ha um, have on your work at Guidewire? So one thing that we didn't mention, we talked a lot about you know, the building software. We probably could go into how do we orchestrate all the other parts of it, but we do have very tight collaboration with our legal and compliance teams inside of the organization. So. Uh, Part of the process that we do on a continuous basis and part of what I'm accountable to bring to our board is updates on what privacy regulations, uh, regulations that might affect our customers do we need to be aware of and what might we do to help make sure that our customers are successful. So it is a big part of what we do. It's not specifically security in the classical sense, but it is security and compliance. And when you look at our um, uh, certifications, things like SOC and ISO, they give you a good idea of uh, the internal control environment. And the good news is that many of those are based off these sort of broader industry standards with some changes. Certainly, you know, GDPR in Europe has some uh, uh, differences and CCPA here in, or uh, over in California where I live uh, have some differences. But again, we're, we're thinking about all of our customers and everywhere we go, we pay attention to the regulations on a regular basis. So, you know, me and the general counsel are best buddies. We talk all the time about these things because as you all know, holy smokes, like how many more regulations are we gonna get on this? Uh, let's see. There were a couple that were very similar. One was very similar to that last one. Um, how do we s handle supply chain risks with open source libraries and technologies or operational third parties using your tools in your SaaS delivery. So there's two parts to that. So Neil mentioned a little bit in the software development life cycle, we have this continuous process. And when I say continuous, I do mean continuous. It's happening right now in the background while we're all here talking uh, in terms of third-party libraries. So we get, we get notifications and tickets and orchestration with all the engineering teams when there are, there are things that we find inside the libraries that we use. 
Third-party services, we have both a vendor management program. So as the vendors come in, uh, we do an evaluation of them, and we have a continuous part of that process as well, along with a threat intelligence function that's in, in our company. So we're paying attention to what's happening in the macro environment and does it affect us, and we're paying attention to any specific threats towards Guidewire, Guidewire customers, or the insurance industry, because we know that we may not be... Oh, wow. Well we may not be as big of a target as all of you are, which, you know, that's not lost on us. We know that you all are, are you know, highly regulated and highly targeted. So we have to think in, the, in a more broad way than just is this something that Guidewire needs to care about. Let me see, what else do we have? Anybody wanna come up and ask us a question live? No? Hey, all right, that'll be great. So you mentioned that we could facilitate our own security testing in yeah. Q3 next year. Mm -hmm. Is that being able to run our own security scans and tools? Because we always got pushed back on that and said we always have to use Guidewire's tools, but we're concerned about certain vulnerabilities that might not be found. We will have a set of constraints that every customer uh, will have. So what we're talking about is black box testing, and that's generally the way that most SaaS providers will allow you to test their services. We, to make sure that, say, your tool doesn't interfere with our tools or another customer, have to make sure that we're using a unified set of, of security tools. So things like, um, I don't know, Qualys or Nessus or container scanners or things that orchestrate the system, we can't support to make sure that we can scale and to make sure that we're not you know, unintentionally exposing something from other customers. Because I think it was mentioned in one of the keynotes, something like APD is a shared service. It's a shared across all customers, but it's isolated from a, a data perspective. So your data doesn't go across it, but the actual service itself is shared. So we want to make sure that we don't do anything that affects other customers, and that's, that's something you can rely on us for. And we, we do these uh, um, third-party evaluations with reputable pen testers, and we'll, we can provide you the, uh, the tests, which often will help with your compliance requirements. Because I know you might have some requirement that there's a a vulnerability scan on um, a regular basis. And so we give you one for each major release that we put out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, how much time do we have? We have five minutes, this is great. Okay, here's a question on shared responsibility model. Does, does the combination of two distinct security processes, customer and guideware, have disadvantages over a unified security process? In the model that we use for guidewire, so you can kind of think of insurance suite as like a a really full-featured software development kit that you deploy your special sauce onto our specially uh, designed service that helps you to do a, a multitude of other things. Um, I think that the shared responsibility model is important because you hold the context on your implementations. And so we can, we, we actually, and we do, we do quite a bit of stuff in the background in terms of monitoring and detection, et cetera, but you have a lot more context on is this, is this uh, you know, intended functionality or is this not secure? Because there's a lot of nuance for things like access control, for example, that you, know, you may be okay with everybody seeing something that's in your data set. Um, so I think it actually helps, the really important part is that we're joined together on the, uh, on the process. So you can say, this is where our responsibility ends. You're gonna handle the underlying service. You're gonna handle detection and response. You're gonna handle all these things. And then we can focus on the things that are important to our implementation and not worry about sort of like the cameras in the data center, which we you know, have AWS handle, or you know, the vulnerability 24 by seven SOC on the underlying platform. You can focus on your application and how you deliver it. So you get some advantages and we both get a lot more scale by doing that and you get to, again, have a process where you can manage your own security, compliance, and regulatory requirements, which we all know is super important to all of your delivery. Let's see. You guys asked a lot of questions, this is good. Uh. Okay, Guidewire seems to have a forward-thinking approach to security. We've heard a lot regarding cloud security. What are you doing to ensure SIs put the same amount of thought into on-premise implementations where the path isn't clear? 
So Mark, I don't know if you want to answer this one in terms of the resources. I would say that the resources that we built, we thought about the broad spectrum of customers. That's right. Also, it was, did it say there about on-prem also? Yeah. Right. So um, mm -hmm. well, with that, we <laughs> good question. Yes. So when it comes to on-prem itself, that is on in your realm, but we have provided materials to help. Mm -hmm. um, as I was saying, we do have a collection of inspections to help with some of the security-related items, but also some of the, the documents that we have in docs.iro.com. There's a uh, cloud, uh, what is it, cloud standards area you can go inside of there. We created a document last year that listed, I think it was 20 different patterns for security, things to look for in your code itself. Unfortunately, those are kind of hard to automate. So we do have this as a document as a reference to see what to look for inside of your code to att uh, for attestation. Now, when it comes to our SIs, and I'm assuming they're talking about our implementation, no, sorry, our solution partners who have their own specific uh, additions they'd like to add into the client and put it in GuideWare Cloud, we do hold them to the same accountability. We actually have internal teams where we're looking at the architecture of the code itself, and I believe You've got a team, don't you, Neil? Yes. That uh, during the process itself, um, once it gets to a certain point, they bring it to their team to start looking at the code, the physical code, to make sure that it's still compliant and it doesn't have those particular issues. I'm going to do a controversial one because I think we're going to edit out the questions here. But I think it's a good question and just you know, kind of how I, this is more like personally how I think about these things. So when we see a large ransomware attack in the news, a carrier had to pay out Bitcoin to a criminal enterprise, which we know we're all being targeted. Silver lining is that we can learn from it. Do ransomware victims publish lessons learned for greater good? So first of all, I think it's, it's it always like, I, I don't get any joy out of seeing carriers or hospitals or the school district in LA or anybody get hit by ransomware. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one of the biggest topics of our time and maybe one of the defining topics of our time. Ransomware being a really big component of this. But I think the more that we can share, like the question was, do ransomware victims publish lessons for the greater good? Right now, I don't think they do. I think everybody gets kind of embarrassed, yeah. right, when something happens and we kind of compartmentalize. But when we, when I was talking about the shared uh, uh, threat intelligence, I think that if all of us decide that it's important enough, we can get together and build closed groups like this and share information in ways that can help us all to be more resilient. Because again, these attackers are all sharing information. You know, we, we should do the same. So I might encourage you if your security teams aren't part of the FS ISAC, the Financial Services ISAC, or the IT ISAC, join the FS ISAC, join the IT ISAC, they're all working towards very similar things in a more broad sense. So they're not as focused as our cloud SaaS one and maybe not as tight, but it would be great if there was like a insurance special interest group. And maybe there is, and I don't know, because I'm not a insurer, but um, I think that there are lessons to learn. We just need to kind of pull it out of the shadows and, and have these sort of safe Chatham House uh, uh, forums that we can share this stuff. All right, thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you.